for all the latest from the world of motoring hit that subscribe button and stay connected The Royal Enfield Classic 500 was launched in India in late 2009 and quickly became one of its most popular models. VK, who joins us today, owns not one but two Classic 500s and is all set to share his ownership experience. Hi VK, good morning and it's great to have you here. So, the Classic 500, I know this does not look like the Classic 500 that we all know of, but we'll get back get back to that in a lot of detail. But uh, how did you zero on this bike in the first place? Hey, morning. Uh, so. Yeah, I was having a Pulsar earlier and uh, was not very particular about a Royal Enfield per se. Um, so I was pretty happy with my Pulsar, but then uh, I bought a car and then I stopped riding a bikes. Yeah. And uh, one day I hit uh, upon a Bullet, which was pretty old uh, model and uh, was inspired by the look sound as well as the market demand, to be very frank, <laughs> for old Bullets. Yeah. So I was actually searching for uh, something similar and was uh, did a lot of um, uh, research uh, but I ended up uh, uh, hitting upon this particular 500 Classic which is a 2012 Jan model and okay. I bought it in uh, 2014 okay. as a second hand uh, bike and uh, from that time onwards yes. Um, but I believe you picked up another Classic 500 after that. Oh yes, I. Uh, <laughs> that's another interesting story. <laughs> I. I bought uh, this one and then I actually figured that the thump which was there in the old bullet was not there in this UC model, the aluminium uh, engine model. Okay. So I went and bought a 1969 G2 model which was the last made uh, England engines Okay. Uh, that I bought from Coimbatore and um, it is an awesome vehicle. The only challenge with those old models and if I have to drive both the uh, bikes uh, that has a gear shifting on the yeah. right side okay. and this is on the left side so it's kind of uh, you know confusing when you try riding both you know back to back yeah right? on so uh, then i wanted to restore it completely back you know give it a new coat of paint and stuff like that that's still in progress okay. i haven't made much progress because i didn't have time and then i bought a brand new 500 classic okay. as well okay. thinking i'll uh, sell this off and then use a new one but then I've spent a whole lot of time myself, uh, the entire customization is from my side. I uh, typically don't give it for any customization to any of the companies per se. Okay. Uh, it's all my thought process, my uh, creativity and I keep changing. So you won't see this bike the same <laughs> way when <laughs> yes, you I see the next time. <laughs> okay. um, so I didn't had a, uh, you know, willingness to sell this off yeah. either because a lot of effort had gone in. But I don't know if somebody comes, I'll really sell it off. Okay. Uh, so that's how I ended up, uh, you know, having like three bullets now. Okay. Uh, using uh, on and off each of those, except the old one, which I'm still uh, trying to restore it back to the original. Uh, So the classic 500, uh, you know, it's known for its massive amount of torque. I mean, that's it was the uh, big, biggest Royal Enfield with, with the massive amount of torque. So how has your experience been with it? Yeah, so uh, 500 Classic is one of the, you know, the most powerful in their fleet. Um, I use uh, primarily uh, the bike for uh, long rides, uh, okay. of course, city rides. I mean, I use this on a day to day basis. Okay. I've done uh, long rides in highways. I've done off roading. This works perfectly fine in both the conditions, okay. according to me. Um, did uh, very, uh, very tough uh, off-roading as well. Uh, okay. so it never failed on me for sure. So the whole lot of bottom end torque. Yes, okay. yes, it it does. And uh, when you actually go for a long rides, when you actually stop on a speed breaker or on a um, uh, signal, right? Uh, 
then when you start again right when you go, go as a group then you can see the difference definitely between a 500 and a 350 okay. this, this this just goes right comes back to speed yeah, faster yeah pretty fast and then uh, but uh, when you look at uh, uh, the overall speed right okay since we go as a group of course everybody maintains a speed limit then there is no difference between a 500 and a 350 but that initial pickup and initial gaining speed okay. you'll see a lot of difference between a 500 and a 350 for sure and yeah. uh, what what are the comfortable cruising speeds i've actually the max i've touched is 137 but that's just for a testing purpose okay. i typically do a 110 120 very uh, Easily. Easily, no okay. issues. No issues uh, no. Yeah, that's because some of the mods I've done in my bike as well. Okay. So I never had a problem with uh, touching a 120 per se. So, but uh, 100, 110 cruise very easy. Very easy, okay. absolutely no problem. And uh, what mileage are you getting out of the bike? So, city I get a 30 for sure. Okay. And um, long, again, mostly 30 because I ride at a 120 <laughs> or something, right? So, okay. if you go. At uh, 60s, 70s, uh, definitely it, it, it's going to touch uh, 35 for sure. Okay. Yeah. And uh, how about the fuel injection? That's the biggest thing that was new when it was launched. So that is, it? Yeah, that is true. Um, so I, um, I've not tried a 350 per se uh, for a long ride, but uh, never had a problem per se with the fuel injection. Okay. It, you can see that difference, you know, because it's a fuel injection, it, okay. uh, you know, the response to the throttle and all. It's much uh, better than the curb one, which is an old technology per se, right? Okay. Uh, the only challenge uh, people say about uh, 500 Classic is again the <laughs> fuel injection, <laughs> the issues with the fuel pump and things like that. Okay. The only advice uh, from my side for the 500 Classic owners or any of the Royal Enfield mm -hmm. with the EFI is never wait till it becomes a uh, reserve. reserve. Okay. When you know what your mileage is that yeah. you are getting, right? So if it is a full, you are getting a 300 for an approximate, you know, 10 yeah. liters. Um, it, it's a 13.5, but I'm saying yeah. above uh, reserve is a 10. Yeah. 10. Yeah. Once it touches 150, go and Thank fill God. it up yeah. again so that you will never uh, go beyond that one and it, the fuel pump will never have a problem if you do that. Okay. Another thing which you have to do is uh, fill from uh, some reputed uh, this one. So that becomes a challenge when you go for a long ride. So always carry some extra petrol. That's what I always do. And if it is going below, then just fill it up until you see a Proper, pretty good yeah. uh, petrol uh, bunk. Okay. So that's uh, that's the only thing you need to bother about EFI. And you do regular cleaning on your um, uh, throttle body, fuel injection, and uh, sometimes the fuel pump as well. If you can do that yourself, okay. my suggestion is don't give it to okay. somebody else. And most of the people are not uh, you know skilled enough yeah, to do that. Check, huh? Uh, with some amount of uh, YouTube learning yeah. and all the stuff, you can do it yourself per se and you'll be more confident on managing your bike on a long ride. If something happens, you know what to do, where the problem oh, is and st okay. stuff like that. So. And uh, in, in terms of uh, the performance, uh, like in city, do you feel comfortable riding a you know, big classic 500 in city? Oh, definitely. I, I never faced any issues. Okay. Maybe because I am so used to, right? Okay. Uh, I mean, the answer is there in your question, sir. Okay. Because I'm so used to, I'm uh, using this bike. In fact, there are a lot of modifications. You see, I have a longer, uh, wider handle mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Uh, the only thing is like, of course, I never like to do that. But uh, you see a lot of uh, bikes uh, zipping uh, through, you know, between uh, two vehicles and all. I never uh, used to do that even otherwise. Okay. So, when you're riding a bike uh, bullet per se, right, you have to be a little more disciplined. Okay. And if you are able to, are a disciplined um, rider, you don't face any issues, okay. whether it's a city or in a long ride. You have to be disciplined for sure. And okay. this is safety for yourself as well as the other people on the road. And uh, the biggest question, you know, you, in the first question, you told me that, you know, this one doesn't have the thumb. So, uh, it, does that mean that it's, it's muted or, you know, uh, it, the Royal Enfield feel is not there? What, what exactly do you mean by that? Uh, so the, I'm pretty sure that anybody who, who's going to buy a UC uh, based uh, bullet, first thing they'll do is like they'll go and change their exhaust. Okay. That's just for getting that thumb back, right? Uh, when okay. you change it to a better quality uh, exhaust, you can still hear yeah, that uh, thumb, but not exactly the way uh, the old, old ones, ones are because that can actually drive at a pretty low uh, speed as well. Okay. Here, you know, it's, it's to, kind of... Um, more than the up, yeah. yeah so that slow notes you know that um, you can't hear yeah. in this one 
but i i know that one of my uh, uh, friend who had made some modification so that you can still get the yes. similar yeah. thumb like a old one okay at a lower speed okay. right so yeah it's it's uh, if you want to get it back yes that's what it is but um, it's an illegal modification if you are changing your exhaust so be aware uh, <laughs> the consequences yes consequences you have to be careful of Now the uh, classic fine it's essentially a cruiser but we all know that and we have all seen that it can handle much more uh, how has your experience been with it yeah this uh, finder classic is a, actually a pretty heavy machine it's close to around 200 kilo you know with a 90 percentage uh, fuel fuel uh, capacity uh, but uh, i think that uh, being heavy itself is you know makes it more uh, you know st sturdy when you when you ride right Okay. Um so I've taken this to for uh, even uh, Bhutan uh, my Fender Classic I took it to, last year I went to Bhutan for a ride. Okay. Uh so there uh, you will see very good roads as well the main roads are pretty good but there are like roads where there are no roads. Okay. <laughs> right? Places okay. where you have to do off roading okay. and stuff no. like that. So okay. it it performed pr pretty well in all the places. Okay. Uh but again I would um, rather um, comment on the tires which uh, uh royal enfield yeah. comes with um, it it had uh, the tmr of uh, tires uh, as the stock tires okay i didn't find it very comfortable with that one it was not very stable on the wet roads okay uh, dry road it was okay but wet roads when you apply the brake it's gonna you know skid Skate. for okay. sure okay. so that's the reason i changed uh, those uh, tires initially to okay. a seat zoom and then now it is a ralco tubeless tires okay uh, when we talk about tubeless tires i wanted to give a suggestion uh, tried many uh, combinations okay so right now i am on a tubeless tire with a tube okay and with a puncture sealant inside that one okay okay yeah. i think this is the best combination that is available a lot of people go with alloy wheels alloy the problem with alloy wheel is like it can break if you go and hit a pothole or during a hmm. um, off roading yeah then that's a useless one yeah here you can always you know repair even if the rim gets some dent you can repair and then still, still keep, uh, keep you using it okay um so tubeless tire the best part is the side walls are pretty strong okay. so it doesn't go flat completely so okay. even if you get a puncture you can still at a very uh, slow speed right till the next puncture shop ensure that the nails is taken out the air is uh, taken off completely the neck should be pulled inside okay. uh, pushed inside and then you can ride very slowly nothing will happen just go there uh, do the puncture repair all the stuff okay there is a word of caution there as well if you are going solo or maybe in a very smaller groups uh, for a long ride like a leh ladakh or places if you get a puncture it's very difficult okay. for to take out the tire because of the same reason it is the side walls are uh, pretty strong right okay. so it it takes some effort for you to take the tire out and, and then yeah. you know repair the puncture and stuff like that otherwise uh, with a puncture sealant a tubeless tubeless tire with a tube uh, this is the best combination i've seen so far okay and in terms of its braking how how is it to perform <laughs> and feel comes with a pretty bad braking i'm sorry <laughs> to say that <laughs> um so we rely on the front brake a lot uh, because it's a disc brake um <coughs> the back brakes are pretty bad i would say um okay. so you need to be uh, careful on the combination you apply with the between the front brake mm -hmm. and the back brake okay. and if you master that art i think you can uh, quite a bit safe <laughs> on okay. that aspect but i think they definitely should improve the braking uh, power okay. because it's such a big uh, vehicle with such a big uh, you know high torque mm -hmm. and you know power right okay if you need to stop then it needs to be stopped at yeah. a very short distance okay. for the safety of yourself as well as the other people yeah. on the road right so braking yes it requires definitely a lot of improvement uh, but uh, you know recently like uh, two days back uh, the, long... the, the 350 came with abs so yeah. are you planning to retrofit that onto this or something uh, like that that's a good question as i said you know this vehicle keeps changing its shapes and you know modifications keep changing so yes definitely i may try that out uh, for sure because uh, safety is something which i will never compromise on okay. 
and that's the reason lot of other things which i uh, use it most lot of things are imported from us which you can see in this one okay uh, i'll go through those modifications later on but uh, um, safety is something which i'll never compromise and because we use spoke about the safety aspect i would definitely like to another suggestion from my side uh, for all the viewers is never ever ride a bike without a helmet even if you are going to a grocery shop which is close by always wear helmet i had two um, ish accidents happened in my family i don't want to get into the details but i've seen uh, what people have gone through the bad side uh, of bad it. side of it uh, so a lot of people complain say i'm going only like you know, half a kilometer can i uh, no there is nothing like uh, it can be compromised right it's yeah. uh, safety is not optional so just ensure that you wear the best uh, that is where you should invest actually you know yeah. the gears that you uh, use for riding right not on your exhaust or uh, fancy leds <laughs> none of that you can still go with without any of those but your safety is the most important part of it uh, uh, yeah none of the safety equipments can give you immortality we are all humans we are all mortals uh, but in case of a worst uh, situation like uh, meeting with an accident uh, wearing helmet will definitely save you a lot and when you are talking about helmet go with a very good quality of course there are some um, things happening within the isi mm -hmm. and all the stuff uh, coming up but do not compromise on uh, safety. safety that's one thing which i want to tell all the uh, viewers for sure So you know, the next question is 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 something which you know every Royal Enfield owner is worried about. So how has your uh, experience been with the Royal Enfield Classic 500 in terms of its service, in terms of its maintenance? And uh, please take us through you know how much you have uh, you know invested on it. <laughs> That's a very interesting question, and I'm pretty sure that all the Royal Enfield owners would uh, be interested, uh, or the potential uh, new owners will be interested in knowing about the maintenance. part of the royal enfield in my opinion this has a lot of quality issues for sure but if you treat this like a newborn baby that means you need to give lot of attention and care uh, it it's not going to give you much of a trouble okay um service part uh, for the royal enfield is still a big challenge even though they have opened lot many service centers lack of skilled uh, laborers the passion for the job by these laborers there right uh, yeah. those are completely lacking uh, i would say right okay. they just come do it as a, another job okay whereas if you look at all these uh, old uh, mechanics uh, who are uh, specialized in bullet right they have a passion for the bullet and that shows up when you go there and then give your vehicle the way they maintain your vehicle the repair their they want it running perfectly yes, then yeah they, okay. they they are more concerned about than us right so they'll ensure that it is done properly whereas we just go to a service center they they have a checklist and they just need to complete that checklist exactly. there is no passion i see in them very mechanical very right? very yeah so uh, that that's where the quality of the service you know suffers when it comes to the service centers per se and i think uh, royal enfield should uh, definitely look at you know improving the service quality for sure um but another suggestion again <laughs> to the royal enfield uh, um users is like you need to learn some basic minimum maintenance by yourself uh, for example even for a oil change right why do you need to take it to a service center or a mechanic for that matter you can do it yourself it's pretty easy maybe it takes at the max uh, 30 minutes including every everything that you do including flushing and all the stuff um so you, you can do a lot of things yourself including uh, as i said you know the, the cleaning the throttle bodies or uh, Uh, EFI the under EFI system yeah. you can do all those uh, on your own okay uh, changing the cables uh, always uh, use a dummy cables you know extra dummy cables yeah, uh, case, especially yeah. on your uh, if you are planning for long rides yeah, so. it definitely saves your day if you have that uh, extra cable, cable on it okay. those things you can do on your own uh, okay. another major major part of uh, maintenance i would say it's not a maintenance most of you uh, guys will go 
install of LED lights or any a lot of other uh, electrical items. That is the most uh, uh, risky part as well, I would say. Right? If you don't do it properly, it can definitely yeah. affect your your entire uh, uh, this one. A short circuit so can happen. Any you, wiring can wire, get cut. Yes. Uh, earth itself and you yes just, yeah. so you'll see suddenly maybe if the wire is cut uh, because the poor quality uh, of wire it comes or the way they have done the wiring suddenly you'll see that your um, battery is dead that is because the current is leaking somewhere right somewhere, yeah. so uh, checking all those uh, ensure the um, water is there and the acid level is proper in the, the battery. battery and if it is uh, going low look at where if uh, there are any uh, you know uh, skin off uh, issues of the wires and wires. all the stuff and if you are adding any extra lights any extra electrical accessories um, there is a way it needs to be done um, so it's there in my facebook page uh, i think there is a video also that i've published on that one i think you should uh, and that's uh, that's based on uh, you know the suggestion by other experts which is in this field i've uh, learned that uh, technique I think you all should uh, go ahead and um, check, it, check it out and then do it on your own. Mm -hmm. uh, electrical is one thing which is uh, okay. which can fail pretty fast as well, especially if you're on a long ride. Suddenly, what if your light goes off, okay. right? You're in an evening ride and there's no light means yeah. you can't even go. Right. Yeah. So, easy to troubleshoot if you know some basics mm -hmm. of the electricals and stuff like that. And you can add, safely keep adding more things. If you actually follow that uh, wiring system, which is uh, already published, there. can you take us through what all you've done? Like, uh, I see, I see a lot of, <laughs> a lot of, switches, of switches, right? I see a lot yes. of lights. So, if you can uh, take us through. Yeah, definitely. Because when you go for long ride, most of the roads, uh, Indian roads, are um, full of uh, potholes, speed breakers, and no street lights as well, right? Okay. That that actually affects your safety, yeah. right? You are riding at a even at a 50 kilometer speed. You have a very big pothole you go and hit because the lighting of course the uh, the stock lights are pretty bad for okay. sure right and if you rely on the stock light and the, with, there's no street light per se you go hit the pothole it, anything can happen yeah, yeah. right so having proper headlights i have heard a lot of things from other people hey this is gonna blind others and all the stuff yeah. but the way you fix it, the kind of lights you mm -hmm. use matters a lot, right? You, you are not fitting it for blinding somebody. You focus it on the road so that, uh, you know, you can see the road, the road better, better, right? It's uh, And uh, so, yeah, I have like two pairs of LED lights, which I use only when I go for long rides, especially on uh, night, right? Okay. Uh, then I have uh, some laser lights as well on the back. That will ensure that if it is a uh, night time or it's raining heavily, People can steal that uh, laser light, so they know that there is a vehicle in, in front, front of you. Okay. Uh, then uh, the hazard light doesn't, which doesn't comes uh, by default mm -hmm. in a classic. Uh, we install that as well. Um, okay. So those are some of the you know major things. I ha I used to have a flagpole with a light as well. So one of the switches for that I had to fit it exactly. back now. Um, you have the top box as well. And yeah, I have uh, made uh, some modifications. If you look at even uh, look at this, uh, these are those NGK spark plugs and cables. Okay. In fact, now I replace the spark plug with a 360 degree um, a brisk uh, a spark plug. Okay. It has a better firing actually. Okay. Uh, the, all the other spark plug comes with one uh, lead, right? Yeah. This comes 360. Okay. So the firing will definitely for sure happen. So no misfires will happen. You'll have better pickup and all the stuff. Okay. So that is uh, another those things I bought from uh, US actually. This uh, uh, exhaust wrap which is from DA, the world uh, number one. Okay. It actually helps a lot when you're going for long ride because that heat will not uh, hit your uh, body thighs, or yeah, the thighs, thighs right? Yeah. That's only for that one. It's not a fancy stuff that is added per se. Uh, it had um, self-start as well, uh, central locking and self-start. I, I don't think most of the cars itself have a self-start, you know, remote self-start I'm saying. Yeah. So this comes with that as well. Uh, so the top box is a 39 litre, again bought from US. And uh, uh, changes the seat, uh, I see you. Oh yeah, so this, uh, I would definitely suggest uh, this seat. It's called a perfect seat, uh, made by Mr. Imran in Mumbai. Okay. Pretty popular in India. 
So this uh, backrest will definitely help you when you go for long rides. You'll never get a back pain when you sit in this seat as well as with the backrest. Okay. So this is something which you can always invest on yourself because what's the point in having a back pain after a long ride, right? Yeah. This you will never get a back pain if you go in this one. I've done 650 in one shot and I never had a back pain with this, okay. this seat. So that's another thing which I would definitely suggest. Um, the other thing which uh, this one has, uh, which I have not bought in today, is a GPS tracker. Okay. That again, um, on the app, uh, mobile app, okay. you can see Very track likely. and all the stuff. So that lot of, uh, you know, cases where, you know, the bullets get stolen and all the stuff, right? It's easy to track, easy to tell the police where it is and then retrieve it back. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's gone. If you can't yeah. uh, track, it, track it in a day, it's gone, gone for yeah. sure, right? Um, so those kind of things are something if you really love your uh, bullet then GPS is something which I would definitely suggest to have. Uh, that's I think uh, uh, this, K uh, this uh, custom uh, paint job on the tank. Uh, you know, it, you know it, the Thunderbird X right now they have unique color schemes like this. So uh, did you do it yourself and uh, what, what is the thought process? Yeah. So. I, when I'm looking at the modifications, right, I uh, wanted it to look unique as well, right? That yeah. is when I went to one of my friend, uh, uh, Sandesh, who runs a paint uh, shop and detailing shop. Um, and I told him, hey, so they had a, this Motomax um, wax uh, uh, one uh, bottle was there, okay. which has a close to similar color with the, in that uh, bottle itself is a yellowish colored okay. one. I said I want an yellow which is kind of similar to that shape and then he came back and uh, suggested be this with some glitters on it and then I said yes go ahead and do it. Okay. So this is a pretty um, a unique uh, color combination I would say. Of course other bullets had uh, maybe couple of them had a similar mm -hmm. one but I'm pretty sure that I made it this uh, <laughs> pretty popular through Facebook and other um, uh, social media. Uh, so there was uh, an article of uh, once by Rush Lane saying that hey, uh, the new 500 upcoming vehicles are uh, uh, inspired by the modified mm -hmm. bike uh, bikes by like this, yeah. yeah, custom bikes like this one, and they have covered this uh, bullet in their okay. article and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it looks unique. Um, I get a lot of compliments when I go uh, stop on a signal. I know people used to admire, say, yeah, it's a good color combination, stuff like that, and makes you feel happy that you did a right uh, decision sometimes right <laughs> uh, by the way this bike is actually named as uh, TGIC okay uh, if you search for TGIC Royal Enfield you'll see a lot of uh, all, all photos your and yeah, okay. uh, videos on this one and TGIC stands for the great Indian circus okay. <laughs> because yeah it looks like maybe a circus bike but <laughs> uh, yeah uh, that that's what I know about the customization most of the stuff that I've done So we know, or should I call you VK? Like yeah, everybody, VK, yes. <laughs> like everybody calls you. So I'm sure a lot of people are going to search for TGIC and you know find out details on what all you have done. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, you know articles out there on your bike. And uh, thank you once again for coming here and sharing all this information. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I'm more than happy to actually um, you know come and uh, I, or rather I got an opportunity to talk about my bike. Uh, in case if any of the viewers are interested in learning about that wiring thing which I was told about or any of the modifications for that matter, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to. In fact, I used to actually, uh, my friends used to come, I do the wiring for, for them. them. And okay. In fact, I teach them and uh, rather really make nice. them yeah. do that in front of me so that they can learn and they can troubleshoot later, later on, on things that. like that rather than just doing it for, for them, them, right? Yeah. So. Yes, anybody in Bangalore, feel free to come uh, directly. Other people can contact me through Facebook uh, and I'll be more than happy to help them. Thank yeah. you once again. Thank you. Thank you. So guys, like BK said, you take care of the Classic 500 and the Classic 500 takes care of you. Thank you for watching and please do hit that subscribe button.